Life purpose is first and foremost being. You know, there is, that's the first resonance of life purpose is being. And you are being because there you are sitting inside of your own existence. You're living and moving and having your being. So you've already achieved the pinnacle of life purpose. Because the pinnacle of life purpose is being. You, you know, the, the cake of life purpose is already baked. That's being. Doing, achieving, and creating is a little icing on the cake. But the cake of life purpose is already baked because it is the resonance of being. And the greatest achievement that you will ever have is the achievement of your existence. That's being. Everything else springs from that. There is no greater accomplishment than being. Doing, achieving, and creating as accomplishments will never be greater than the accomplishment of being. Because even when people do amazing things and create and, and achieve, but then don't celebrate, that's a dishonoring of being. You know, that's a dishonoring of the root of life purpose, the root of creation. See, being is the root of creation because everything that you create and everything that you achieve and will bring about in the objective realm of your world is generated from your inner being. Your blessings are made out of you. Your accomplishments are made out of you. Because they first have to exist as formless, subjective frequency inside of you. And then they make and then they emerge into your objective realm. And they become outwardly manifest in some way. They started subjectively and formlessly in your being. The fact that every blessing that you'll ever have in your whole life emerges from your inner being means that you already have every blessing that will ever come about. Come about. It's it's just subjectively waiting to be observed into activation, into outwardness. You're subjectively waiting for you to breathe the breath of life upon it. See, and that's honoring the supreme reality that it is. See, formless reality is even in some sense more real than the reality of form. Because formless reality is co-eternal with God unfolding down the corridors of forever and is changeless. Form is always changing. Form in the three-dimensional domain always has an expiration date. Things that are of form and, co and the concrete, you know, don't last forever. We get confirmations of that every day of our life in this three-dimensional realm. But that which created the form is forever. That formless frequency, that formless desire, that formless intention, that formless alignment with the mind of God. So God loves you and validates you with an infinite love and validation just by virtue of your being. 
and there's nothing you could do, achieve, or create that would cause the love of God for you to be any different. If God loves and validates you with an infinite love just by virtue of your being, then that's the way that you're meant to love and validate yourself. You don't need external excuses for self-validation. It's a thrust from within. And this urgency, let it go. Time can't run out on eternity. And you're eternal. So time can't run out on you. You may not do it all in one lifetime or ten lifetimes. But if you measure one or ten alongside eternity, they'll come up pretty much the same. You are unfolding down the corridors of forever. And in due course of eternity, you will bring to fruition every one of your heart's desires. But you don't have to wait for the sequential unfoldment of time. You know, you can close the gap between you and any blessing that you want by acknowledging that all blessings exist simultaneously with the distinction that they're not all simultaneously activated. And you have the power to activate them by passionately casting your attention upon them. Where your attention goes, the energy is going to follow. Energy supports attention. Energy empowers attention. That's all you have to do is, is have your attention long enough upon it. So when you had this, this illusionary thought that says, oh, you're not achieving anything and you're worthless and, and all of that, say, so, okay, so ignore that thought. That thought is a liar. And it's important for you to know that just because a thought passes through your mind doesn't mean it's your thought. Because you're a biological broadcasting, you know, station. You're, that's what your being is. You're broadcasting, you're sending out thoughts and signals and feelings, and you're perpetually receiving signals of thoughts and feelings. And everything that passes through your mind and heart doesn't necessarily originate with you. So don't be so quick to claim a thought especially when it's a negative thought. Even if the negative thought ex originated from within you, it's still not yours. Because you are the divine child of God. And there is no dark stuff in God, nor is there anything dark in the qualitative extension of God. And that means you. That all of your darkness, all of your shadows, all of your negativity has been engaged with on the surface of your being. None of it has ever been engaged with from the center of your being. Because that's where you cohabitate with God. The center of your being is the cohabitation of you and God. There is nothing dark welcomed into the center. It's going to always be the surface. It can't be the center because love owns the center. God owns the center. Light owns the center. The authentic resonance of you owns the center. So when you turn your back on those negative thoughts and, and every, every thought has enough awareness to know that it has to be fed energy to perpetuate its existence. It knows that. And when you start ignoring negative thoughts, just like if somebody was talking to you and you turn your back, you know, on them, how long are they going to keep talking to you? Not very long. Because you're not paying attention to them. 
If you're not paying them any attention, you're not paying them any energy. And negative thoughts, no. So they're going to haul ass elsewhere where somebody might feed them some energy because they have also enough awareness to know that their days are numbered. Just like the ego. The ego, you know, the lower human ego knows its days are numbered. That's why it's always scrambling to try to be in control. It's in the death throes. Now there is an elevated frequency of the ego which represents our individualized being. Yet it's meant to be led by the elevation of our higher consciousness. And then the ego becomes a servant and stops trying to pretend that it's the master. So even now, turn your attention to every version of reality where you are supreme in your achieving, supreme in your doing, supreme in your creating, and you're also of an elevated awareness that you're not dependent upon your doing, achieving, and creating in order to feel good. Align in divine awareness with every version of reality where you know that you're infinitely wonderful because you exist. You're infinitely wonderful because you live and move and have your being. That's the prerequisite for being wonderful is that you are being. And being has to be wonderful because being is the offspring of God. So right alongside this three-dimensional reality where you sometimes get caught in limited thinking and feeling like you did the other day, there are multiple versions of reality of yours where you are of exalted consciousness where you, right now, even now, it exists, just waiting to be activated. It's formless frequency. It's a formless embryo or formless embryos in the womb of your being because you are the microcosm of the quantum field. Therefore, wherever you are is where the quantum is. You're the microcosm of God Almighty, therefore wherever you are is where God Almighty is. So you are the microcosm for love, absolute love ad infinitum. Love lives within you because love lives everywhere. Because love along with God has a presence that is everywhere and an absence that is nowhere. Love can never be absent because it's a quality of God and that which is a quality of God has to be omnipresent along with God evenly present everywhere all at the same time so love is never not there your attention upon it can turn away and you can be in the illusion that you are loveless you can be in the illusion that you are accomplishment-less, that you are achievement-less. But achievement, accomplishment, love, peace, wisdom, divine power, all those things, co-eternal with God. And so there's no spot where they are not. You just have to Put your attention there. So as you feel these multiple versions of reality, like right now, feel them. And feel them with the feeling power of, of God. Feel them with the feeling power of Astarius. I'm a mirrored reflection of your 
capacity to be the quantum observer, to be the quantum feeler. See, you observe, you put your attention upon these versions of reality where you are limitless. These versions of reality where you are achieving your absolute heart's desire. And then you elevate your feeling. You feel ascended love ad infinitum for these great victories of accomplishment, of elevated being. These great versions of reality of you. You are a multi-dimensional being. You simultaneously live in all of the dimensions, despite the fact that your consciousness may be uh, oblivious to that fact. Sometimes the veil drops and you don't see. And yet the truth is, you live, move, and have your being multi-dimensionally. You live in every dimension. All at the same time. Because you, along with God, have a presence that is everywhere. And an absence that is nowhere. All of your great victories, all of your great expressions of self-love, all of your great creations, along with you, have a presence that is everywhere and an absence that is nowhere. You and all of your blessings are omnipresent eternal expansion. Your blessings perpetually exceed themselves, perpetually and divinely outdo themselves. Just like you are eternally expanding, as the universe is eternally expanding, as your blessings are eternally expanding, now let your joy about it eternally expand. Right now, choose to feel ascended love ad infinitum, bigger and brighter, breathe into it, squeeze that perineum as you inhale. Pull that kundalini energy up all the way through all of your chakras and then even through the top of your head into resonance with the 8th through the 12th chakras outside of your body that go all the way into the universe and the multiverse. Feel the resonance of your highest achievement. Feel your highest achievement as if your highest achievement was your most sacred lover. Feel the reality that achievement is courting you and pursuing you. Achieve, achievement is knocking on the door of your heart saying, Dana, I want to love on you. Success is knocking on the door of your heart saying, Dana, I want to love on you. Self-empowerment is knocking on the door of your heart saying, Dana, I want to love on you. All of the abundance that is, was, or ever will be is knocking on the door of your heart. And abundance is saying, Dana, I want to love on you. Dana, will you allow me to love on you? Success is always pursuing you. You are a magnet for success. You do have the power by the twisted expression of free will, of free will to turn off your magnetism so that you are not attracting the success and you're not attracting the well-being and you're not attracting the self-love but all of the goodness of life 
is hot on your tail, pursuing you, hot after you. Success has the hots for you. Peace has the hots for you. Abundance has the hots for you. Feel that. You don't even have to go out and get the abundance. All you have to do is be the quantum observer and place your attention to everywhere and every when and every version where abundance is infinitely flourishing. Because there are far more versions of reality where abundance is infinitely flourishing than there are versions of reality where there is lack. Lack is not co-eternal with God. Yet abundance is. I'm so honored that you love yourself that much. That you co-created such a transmission. That's, that's really wonderful self-love. You know, and I'm so grateful for that version of your reality and that version of your consciousness that knows that everything that emerges from the moments we share are that which you have an equal hand and heart and mind of co-creation in. I'm so grateful for that version of consciousness of yours where you know that. I'm so grateful for that version of your consciousness where you love yourself just because just because you are I'm so grateful for that version of your mind. I'm so grateful for that version of your mind that knows how to take a journey through the mind of God. I'm so grateful for that version of your mind that knows all things are accessible in the mind of God and you've been given VIP access to every sector of the mind of God you have VIP access to every sector of the mind of God. I'm so grateful for that version of your awareness that knows that you are a celestial and divine VIP with an all access pass into every dimension ooh, of the mind of God. Feel that bigger. Let's feel that together. That's, that's worth the celebration of elevated feeling. Ooh, ooh. Dana is a VIP with an all access pass to every sector of the mind of God. 